Father, we're <clears throat> so grateful for your presence, and we feel that presence, some might say, like electricity, and we know, Lord, it's perhaps more like the breeze that blows stiffly across the city to the smog covered, and the smog all rolls out to sea, and the city is breathing the fresh air that you want us to have, and we feel, therefore, Lord, you're breathing upon us and giving us the the oxygen of life, the life of the Word of God, to give us the strength, to give us the understanding, to give us all those things that we need in this last hour. And we know that that is true because there is nothing missing for that which is perfect has come, the perfect revelation of the Word given to us, and, and we know it on the grounds of vindication because it follows exactly how the Bible was written. And so we are very fortunate people standing in your presence tonight, Lord, and we just pray now that your word shall have free course, as many say, and be glorified, that, that nothing will stop it from going forth, not our spirits or spirit of the enemy or anything whatsoever, as we humbly bow before you and ask for your help and believe you receive it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated now. <clears throat> We're actually into stewardship, I think, number five, I guess. The, um, tonight we had a little message in there on the uh, Mark 16 and the two spirits, and we'll also just talk a certain amount of that also. But uh, because of the fact that I did not intend to make such a detailed and prolonged study of this subject, that uh, stewardship, I neglected to carefully plan every segment so that we could have as clear an account of the subject as is actually in the Word, wherein we see stewardship from the top, meaning the kingdom of God in heaven, to the bottom, which is the kingdom of God on earth. Now, there's a much that I would have actually made a, in a note form to take a series had I uh, been uh, so aware of the particular subject. But uh, I uh, did not look into every facet, <clears throat> or we would have had to start, of course, with the uh, heavenlies to go into the kingdom from the top down to what is on earth today to actually trace what's in the word and to trace the history. And the truth is that until I started to teach on the failed steward stewardship of Adam's accountability to God, it had not crossed my mind as to the scope and revelation that lies in our subject matter. And that's very true because uh, starting with uh, the stewardship of Adam, it went on and it keeps growing on so that we begin actually to see that uh, what we're dealing with is literally the, uh, the whole Bible. The, uh, oh, some years ago I mentioned that the Bible is actually a record of God dealing with man and uh, man's response to God, how that man is dealing back with God, and uh, except for the grace of God, there would be a complete failure on the part of man, and there has been that failure, but in the measures that God has allowed, we have been able to come up to the place where God wants us, so it's all a matter of grace. Now, the basic revelation or spiritual enlightenment of the subject, to my thinking, <clears throat> gives us a better understanding of the inflexibility or of, in, of inflexible predestination and flexible choice, which Brother Branham and most theologians, not all, but a lot of them, have called free moral agency, or as Brother Branham has said, God put Adam to a free moral agency and therefore, he must do that for everybody. So God gave Adam a choice, <clears throat> and thus it is written over here in Genesis, the uh, second chapter concerning that choice in uh, 16 and 17 verse. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day of the eating thereof, dying thou dost surely die. Now we know that Adam died just short of a thousand years. The Brother Branham made that comment, not particularly toward Adam, but the fact of a day 
A thousand years is as a day with the Lord. <clears throat> no man ever lived that out. And we're just coming to that time when we're going to have that particular thousand years on earth here, which is a time period. And uh, even though it's blended with eternity, we're still waiting for the eternal. Now, so therefore, God gave Adam a choice. Now, he already had given him an office. And the office was that he was to literally be the supreme ruler of the universe under Almighty God. And God just handed it to him gratuitously. And he said, here it is. Now, you are to work with it. And uh, there's no doubt in my mind that there are certain things that God said to Adam that you don't find recorded here in the Word, but you uh, begin to see them on the grounds of the history of what has taken place. So he, he said to Adam now, he said, uh, uh, you are, have the right to eat of all the trees and in the garden, except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And if you eat of it, in that day you will die. And of course the woman was included in this. And you can find that over in chapter 1, 26 to 27. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his image. In the image of God created him male and female, created he them. And of course, you'll notice he created him, and then he put the them. And the them, of course, you have masculine and female. And Brother Branham said that was only there on the grounds of propagation. And so what you see there, he called their name Adam. And it's, it's all a matter of looking at uh, Adam, the born one of God, or is called the son of God. The Greek makes it plainer, <clears throat> the born one of God. So, all right, the woman was included in this by virtue of what was said over here, uh, God talking to his only begotten son. Now, notice carefully that neither Adam or Eve had anything to do with who and what they were and what position of responsibility they were given by God, not one thing, not a thing. They didn't have one thing to say with it, about it. They didn't have a choice in the matter. Uh, there was no argument, there was no deal cut. Uh, this was an absolute sovereign act and a sovereign dictate. <clears throat> they had no choice whatsoever in the matter. They were predestinated to it. And you can see that, of course, by Genesis 1, 26 and 27. They were predestinated uh, to it. Absolutely. So absolutely by God himself, in conjunction with his son, we see what occurred and was to occur in Genesis 1, 26, and then was uh, repeated to Adam so that he knew who he was, what he was, what he was to do. Uh, he was given plenty of incentive. He was given lots of motivation. He was given that capacity. Uh, now, <clears throat> so there they had no choice because they were part of God's thinking. They were his thoughts his plan, his purpose, they were predestined. In other words, a set destiny of who, what, and for what purpose. And they were made privy to none of that. They were only told it. So <clears throat> it's a very sovereign situation we see here. And they were made actually, or actual bond servants or slaves, if you will. Now, Paul the Apostle called himself a bond slave too. And, of course, we know that uh, Paul called himself a bond slave of love because of the love of God. And uh, you'll find that most people who study the Word will concur with that, that we are slaves and uh, love slaves of God and we love it, as the Apostle Paul tells us, those things that we once loved we now hate, and the things we hated now love. And uh, I'm sure that most of you sitting here tonight, having a Trinitarian background, even worse than mine, because I was sitting on the fence between the two, and I couldn't make 
I couldn't make head or tail to what the, the real continuity of the doctrine was because I knew there was only one God, but I really was trying to confuse my mind about the other issues. <clears throat> but I hung on to the fact that no matter what, there's one God, and you're not going to get rid of that Son because there's no way that you can go to the Father but by the Son. There's no way the Son did anything except God did it through Him. And today, of course, we have a very clear understanding. But the understanding wasn't so, it wasn't so clear there. <clears throat> now, so we find here that we are actually bond slaves according to God's plan and purpose. And that goes all the way through creation uh, as well as into sonship. So what we're looking at then is a real understanding of Romans, the ninth chapter, and it's in the light <clears throat> of the stewardship wherein God actually gave each one uh, an office, gave him a position, and we can see predestination carried all the way through. Now, we might as well read, take our time here. We begin the first, the first verse. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not my conscience also bearing witness in the Holy Ghost. I have great heaviness and continuous sore in my heart, for I could wish myself a curse from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. Now, that's like Moses, but a little different. Uh, and we, who are Israelites, to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and this giving of the law and the service of God and the promises whose are the fathers and of whom are as concerning the flesh Christ came who is over all God bless forever amen not as though the word of God had taken none effect for they are not all Israel which are of Israel neither because are they the seed of Abraham are they all children but in Isaac shall thy seed be called so there you got you, you got the the, uh, the premise here the start of issue and one is a genuine issue and the other is evidently an intrusion. Now it has to be an intrusion uh, of some sort because as you view life, and uh, life is categorized all the way through from every single type, from even diseases, uh, bacteria, uh, molds and fungus and yeast and everything else, you can put them under a microscope and you can actually uh, find out by examining the form and the action exactly what that is. Now you can't do that with a human being because we found what happened and we describe it tonight as the one lump, the one lump condition. <clears throat> but so right here it tells you that, that these two children were in Abraham, were in Isaac, now coming right on down through with uh, Rebecca, we we're bringing forth these two children. Now, that is they which are the children of the flesh. These are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Now, you'll notice right in there, there's something said in there very, very clearly. One is not a product of the flesh, though it comes by the flesh. The other has to be a product of the flesh and coming by the flesh. So you've got, you've got uh, a very, very uh, strong statement here, and it tells you that those of the flesh are not the children of God, but the children of promise are counted for seed. Now, right there again, you notice that there's a seed that has to do with promise, which is a word. That's why Brother Branham positively called us seed, called us a part of the word, called, it, called us a part of God. <clears throat> for this is the word of promise, that this time when I come and Sarah shall have a son. Now, that was never said before. That's why he had a son <clears throat> by Ishmael. The thing messed up. And not only this, but when Rebekah also conceived by one, even our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. Now notice, election is a calling. And he said here, the one who calls is the elector. And now he said, there's one that is of him, the other isn't. It was said unto her, the younger, the elder shall serve the younger. As is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. Now, he's going to start talking about that. Is there unrighteousness with God? <clears throat> you've, got, you've got even twins now, and one is loved and one is hated. But he already explained to them that one is, one is a promised and the other is not promised. 
One is word by covenant, a part of the word, the other is not. Uh, there's, and, and it all comes by the flesh. There's nothing you can do about it. There's no way, shape, and form. And of course, your, your average, ordinary person that believes in predestination will simply tell you on the grounds that God simply foreknew, he knew, it was nothing definitive. There are not two lines, but there are two lines. And the two lines are in one lump, because it says right here. And people don't like that. It's very confusing. It's very annoying. Uh, it's very unloving, very unkind. It's very mean. It's very terrible that anybody should believe that stuff. And God said, because God wouldn't do that. No, God wouldn't do that. He couldn't do that. No. <clears throat> What should we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? God forbid. Now, no, he's, now he says, for he said to Moses. Now he's going to clear himself on that charge in 14 by going to 15. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I'll have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Or as they say in another translation, I will compassionate whom I will compassionate. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose, have I raised thee up? There's a predestinated clause here. Now, the purpose of God has an end to it. Because there's nobody can stop God and his purpose. There's no way you can stop him. God's got a purpose. Just shut up and take it. If he wants to send you to hell and burn you, that's exactly what you're going to do. You're going to have to shut up and take it anyway. But the people that mouth off are always the ones that can't believe. <clears throat> they raise a big stink about this. And you get your women preachers, and they'll tell you, well, you see what that is? That's your, your two natures in there. <laughs> oh, God. And you wonder why I'm not all sweet and all light and all love and all gooey, gooey. This, this is the stuff that just tears me to pieces and makes me angry. Angry because they don't believe what God said. This man, Paul, is vindicated. This is God talking to you. See? Now, William Branham came just like the Apostle Paul did, which is absolutely marvelous. For the Scripture saith unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. That's the same thing he said about the gospel. It's the same thing he said about the gospel. Through all, through every creature, throughout the whole earth. <clears throat> and remember when the, the, the woman that, that uh, anointed Jesus, he's going to be known through the whole earth. This message goes out the same way. There's got to be something there. See? Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth. Thou wilt then say unto me, Why did he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but, O oh man, who art thou that replies against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Or why have you set me here for this particular purpose? Why do I have this particular position? <clears throat> why? So you got, you got predestination here, just 100%, and it goes all the way back to God. All the way back. And in one place you have birth, and the other place you have creation. And that's the whole thing you're looking at. And then, of course, we know that creation got mixed up with birth. In other words, creation began to exp spread itself <clears throat> to the position to which it was not entitled. The intermingling. Now, hath not the potter power of the clay of the same lump? Moses and Pharaoh. Cut them to pieces, put them in a test tube, there's no difference. No difference at all. When it comes to the one lump. And that one lump, of course, took place back in the Garden of Eden. And the last true human being disappeared when Noah died after the ark settled on the earth. And there were no more true human beings. It was all one lump. When God took Israel into Palestine, <clears throat> he could have bred them back to human beings. He said, don't you dare marry anybody outside of the people here. I've killed them all off. 
You can go in now. I can breed you back by proper marriages and you kill everybody in the land and don't you dare marry anybody or have any woman or any man outside amongst your own selves. What did they do? Did opposite. That's why Brother Branham said in marriage and divorce, God will create again, but not by sex. Sex would do it. All God has to do is match this one and match that one. <clears throat> you get those genes in perfect order. You get the human genes, throw out the animal genes. You'd have a perfect individual again. Dr. Kelly said it would take eight generations to breed the Americans back to health. Ha! You can't even do it in 80 generations because nobody's going to live that long and nobody wants to be healthy. They got a junk food taste and a junk food appetite and, and a junk food body and that's all they want. And they got a junk food religion and that's, you know, french fries, greasy hamburgers, bologna. You and that's made up, don't you? Heart, liver, lungs, pancreas, not to mention diverse things that never did belong to a cow, a horse, or a pig, or a dog. <laughs> you, you, you know, you can't, you can't deal with people anymore, see? <clears throat> so that's why God's going to have a resurrection. Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel under honor, another dishonor? What if God willing to show his wrath and, and to make his power known endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? That he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessel of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> you notice verse 22, if that were properly uh, translated from the Greek, it would show that these people actually prepared themselves. Now what does that mean? If they prepared themselves, they positively then went against the position and authority that God gave them and did on their own what they should not have done. <clears throat> now don't tell me that they don't know better because Paul said to the, to the Jews, he said, the Gentiles who by nature are heathen Gentiles, they do the things that God commanded you to do and you're not doing them and they're doing them. Showing that there is a conscience there that God deals with. The Bible said, the spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord searching the inward parts of the belly. <clears throat> so what you're looking at here is the truth of predestination right down the line where you have predestinated sons and you have also in the predestination on creation because starting with Satan in the garden, preparing themselves coming all the way down here and there is a word that God has spoken concerning all of it and each one has a light. Of course it's the truth where their conscience is now seared with a hot iron but the conscience is still there. <clears throat> <clears throat> that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy which he had afore prepared unto glory. Now, <clears throat> there's where you get your picture today as you had in the days of Jesus when John the Baptist came to make ready the vessels that were prepared, to make ready the prepared people. Now, God has got a prepared people. There's no two ways about it. 100% purely predestinated in the line coming through the flesh, which is different from a line that is also coming through the flesh. And one is distinctly prepared of God. Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. And there's nothing you can do about it. <clears throat> Absolutely nothing you can do about who and what you are. As Brother Brown has said, if you didn't have representation back there, you haven't got it now, and there's no way you can get it. See? <clears throat> That's why they say, well, as the Bible didn't say, why doth he yet find fault? The point is, they didn't have to do what they did. They weren't forced to. <clears throat> Even the child of God wasn't forced to. As the old song said, he does not compel you to go against your will, he just makes you willing to go. 
And that's the truth. And those that are completely adamant will not change as a child of God. God will remove from this land. And as he removes coming up in whatever resurrection they're placed in first or second, they'll find themselves completely bereft. When they could have had so much. <clears throat> we'll see these things as we go along. Now we notice at least two particular principles here. One, the principle of birth. Two, the principle of position. In birth we see Jacob and Esau, twins. In birth we see Moses and, and Pharaoh, twins. Now the, the Hebrews did not look like the Egyptians. You can get the ancient wood carvings and so on. You'll see they don't look alike. Doesn't make one bit of difference. Cut them in pieces, the flesh would test 100% the same because it's one lump. And it's one lump under God who is sovereign and never gives up his sovereignty. He does what he wants when he wants to do it, and he never asks anybody. And that's the book of Isaiah tells you, with whom did I take counsel? <clears throat> with nobody. Who did I ever ask? See, come now let us reason together, said the Lord. What does that mean? Come and listen to me, and I'll show you what is right. And if you can reason unto righteousness, you will come with what I am telling you. You'll agree. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Same thing. You let me in. We'll agree. We'll have a good time supping, communicating. <clears throat> and I'll show you the principles and the way of life. Get you out of this mess here. So God's sovereign. So, two things, birth and position. Now, there is nothing that either of these four the two sets of twins could do about who and what they were. They were born. And nobody says to his parents, how would you even know your parents? Now, I want to be a girl. I want to be a boy. I want to be an accountant. I want to be this. I want to be that. I want the other thing. <clears throat> I want this gift. I want that gift. I want this thing. I want that. This position, that position. No. Nothing to do with your birth. Not one thing they could do about it, and, and not one thing anybody could, but examine the position. <clears throat> so we talk about position, and we go to Hebrews, the 12th chapter, 16 and 17. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you know that how afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. <clears throat> now, in other words, here, there's, a, there's, a, there's something you can miss, and there's nothing under heaven, there's nothing in the plan of God that'll ever give it to you. So you blow, you throw away, <clears throat> disregard, hold in contempt, refuse to listen to, understand, accede to, acquiesce, and move on with God, he moves on without you. I don't care what position you have, how great you are, anything else. God will do everything he can to hold you and mold you. <clears throat> but there is an element here in the willingness of the individual and the ability of the individual to conform to what God desires. You see, now, we go also to Hebrews 11 and the 20th verse. And it says, And by faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith Jacob, when he's dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph, worship on his staff, <clears throat> and so on. So in here, we find there is a position. There are certain things that are granted us. And with that granting, there is a responsibility. And the responsibility has to be adhered to. And under no condition can that responsibility be changed or the laws regarding that responsibility be changed and a man stand right before God. That's the thing that started in heaven. That's where he went. The devil went plumb off. <clears throat> now he's a created being. But see, watch where this whole thing starts. It starts with the created being. Uh, John distinctly tells us, and Brother Branham brought it very clearly, the seed of God cannot sin, and sin is unbelief. Now that person, however, is committed to an office and a trust, and therein he can be at fault. 
<clears throat> How much is practiced by a certain God that said he would be started to pray and fast three days? But he told the congregation, well, he said, I went on then for 12 days. He said, you see, I didn't get an answer. That man is telling you something. He's telling you he can twist God's arm by praying and fasting. The, he said, in spite of the fact of the prophet telling us, we should only pray and fast three days, I did 12. In other words, he couldn't list the prophet that said, pray and fast three days, then you leave it there. Why didn't he leave it there? Why didn't he leave it there? Turn his back and walk off. And say, God, it's in your hands. It's out of my hands. No, you're going to pray and fast 12 days and twist God's arm. Yeah, 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 in the same way. Get in the closet, throw away the key. He came out, but he never came out victorious. He died a drunk. Yeah. You better watch these things because these things are given for our admonition. We might learn by them and know the things that Brother Brandon taught us. <clears throat> so, all right, we saw position. Position all the way through the Bible. Stewardship. Granted a certain place by God. God said to Abraham, oh, you're going to have a child by Sarah. Now oh, Sarah gave up. Just like Adam listened to Eve. He, he, and and uh, he, he listened to Sarah. I can't understand that. His wife Sarah had everything that the, the, the Egyptian girl had. Why would he want it? Now, you men know what I'm talking about, you women. If you can't, you might, God, you're, I'm going home. Forget it. He blew it. He said it by Sarah. Then God rubbed his nose in it. He rubbed his nose so hard, he even had to lie about Sarah, saying, that's my sister. He thought a king might kill him for it. Because God brought her right back prettier and more beautiful than that little, little, little snippet from Egypt. And look what they got out of the Ishmael. Still got a thorn in the flesh there in, in Israel, Arafat coming in. What does he know about God? Or anything else? Says he does, doesn't mean a thing. He's not after the flesh. <clears throat> but I'm going to tell you something. God had to bless them. And God had to bless Esau, uh, Esau on the grounds of what those men did. And they messed with the position that God gave them. So you get a preacher out of line, see what happens with the church. You get deacons out of line, elders, other people out of line, see what happens. There's a sacred trust given in these positions. <clears throat> now, also, uh, we see the prince of birth and, 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 and position here, also in, in Hebrews 11, uh, 23 to 29. It says here, by faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months with parents because they saw he was a proper child, were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Now watch, he, he's, he's right alongside of old Pharaoh there now. Choosing rather, they suffer affliction with the people of God than enjoy the pleasure of sin for season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater uh, riches than the <coughs> treasures of Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him was invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. <clears throat> now there, is, as, the, as the Bible tells us, Moses was a servant faithful in his house. That's over here in, uh, oh, that's what, third chapter or something like that, I don't know. <clears throat> yeah. Who, who was faithful to him that appointed him? As also Moses was faithful in all his house. There was a faithful man. <clears throat> he went right by, but watch. By faith they passed through the Red Sea by, as by dry land. Why? Through the sprinkling of the blood and the protecting power of Almighty God, Jehovah Elohim himself, escorting them over by a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Escorting over. What does it say here? They passed through the Red Sea, which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. <clears throat> See? Both in position. Both foreordained. Both predestinated. But two different lines entirely by reason of the fact that one comes down from the seed of God and the other comes down from a creation. 
because that's what we're looking at. <clears throat> now, look over here in Exodus, the fourth chapter. And we won't take a lot of verses because, my, I'm going to get way behind again tonight if I don't hurry up here. 29 to 31. And Moses and Aaron went and gathered together all the elders of children of Israel. And Aaron spoke all the words which the Lord had spoken unto Moses and did the signs in the sight of the people. And the people believed. And when they heard that the Lord had visited the children of Israel and that he had looked upon their affliction, then they bowed their heads and they worshiped. Now that's what happened with the vindicated ministry. And over here in 5, 1 to 5. Afterward, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, Let my people go, they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should have let? let Israel go. I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. And, he, and they said, the, the God of the Hebrews have met with us. Let us go, we pray thee, three days journey to the desert and sacrifice unto the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence and with the sword. And the king of Egypt said, uh, wherefore do ye Moses and Aaron let the people from, you know, allow them to get away from working? Go, go ye get ye unto their, your burdens. And Pharaoh said, behold, the people of the land are many, and ye make them rest from their burdens. And Pharaoh commanded the same day the taskmasters, you know, they have to make brick of those straw, and so on. <clears throat> now, over here in Exodus 8, um, 16 to 19, the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch, uh, say unto Aaron, stretch out thy rod, and despite the dust of the land, it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And this they did so, for Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod, and smote the dust of the earth, and became lice in man and beast, and dust of the land, and it became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. And the magicians did so with their enchantment to bring forth lice, but they could not. So there were lice upon man and upon beast. And the magician said unto Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. And Pharaoh's heart was hardened. He hearkened none of them, <clears throat> as the Lord said. Now here was a man in position that Israel go. Here was a man that God had raised up in his lineage to be a shelter unto the Israelites. But what does he do? He kills the little children. <clears throat> There's nothing he won't do. He's absolutely a beast. And yet he knows better. This man has a position. He's predestinated. He had nothing to do with the fact of predestination, who and what he is. But he has a responsibility before God because all earthly government has a responsibility to God on the grounds that government is ordained by God and it doesn't matter what kind of government is. Now you can say, well, the democratics are ordained by God. Just the communistic <clears throat> and dictatorship is just as ordained by God. There's nothing you can do about it. Government is ordained. And the devil, of course, being the, the, the power of the universe, <clears throat> the kingdoms of this world, which are going to be taken away from him, he's been allowed that privilege to control. And God, because God did it, God is behind it. And God has taken full responsibility and will continue to take responsibility <clears throat> because it's his, and he'll bring it to a proper end. Now notice the two human, the two human roots of the twins in Genesis 4, 1 to 5, which we understand, of course, is serpent seed where Eve uh, actually brought forth <clears throat> two children of two different forms of life. And here you got it right now, where science can go ahead and take the DNA or the nucleus, call it what you want. I don't know what the scientists call it because one says one thing, one another, call it DNA. <clears throat> you can take it and put it then in an, in an egg, and this now, when it's close enough as it was in the garden, you could actually take that, infuse them, and bring forth individuals, entities, that's what I call them, entities, and the life is not the life that was in the egg at all. It's another life in there, but that egg is alive in this sense that it's raw, it can be joined to it. If it were dead, it would be rotten and go away. <clears throat> so there's a life there. So you can actually take the physical part and bring them together. And that's what they're arguing right now. There's a soul in there. So how would it be if science begins messing with human cells, what will that soul be? Well, I say forget it, a bunch of hogwash. That's been dealt with in the first two, three chapters of Genesis, four chapters. <clears throat> and men revealed to us through Jesus Christ in the 8th chapter of the book of John. <laughs> Here was your father the devil, he said. Right. Yep. Brought it right on down the line. These guys, these guys just don't know anything, see? <clears throat> now, 
<clears throat> we go back before Genesis chapter 1, and we see the original principle of predestination and free will or free moral agency, wherein we see stewardship in the very original. <clears throat> but before we go to the Old Testament, we want to go first of all to Hebrews, the 8th chapter, and we're going to read 1 to 5. Now, of these things which we have spoken, of this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set on the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched not man. Now, this is all of God, see? <clears throat> For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. That's an office. And you have to be a special man to do it. Wherefore, of necessity, that this man have somewhat also to offer. For if he were on earth, he should not be a priest, seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to law, who serve under the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For, says, see, that, see saith he, said God to Moses, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed thee in the mount. <clears throat> so what God did, he showed Moses what was going on in the heavens, which I said is from the top, the kingdom of God in heaven. Then you come on down here. And when Moses was given the revelation, it was copied exactly from the kingdom of God in heaven and then put in the humanistic form down here in order that the children of God in human form and in animal form, what it actually is, mammal form, <clears throat> would have to worship. Now this tabernacle made by Moses was according to a heavenly pattern that was instituted by God himself. Now here is the Lord's prayer. Here is the Lord's prayer on this subject in Matthew 6 and 10. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <clears throat> so we're going to have it eventually. But you have to remember then, you got to go back way, way, even beyond the creation of man if necessary. And go way back to the very heavenly pattern that is there. <clears throat> so we see Matthew 6 and 10 is the same as Hebrews 8, 1 to 5. There's actually a pattern in heaven. There's actually something that God laid down. There's actually something that God wants to have and will have. See, that also is predestinated. And that form must come to pass at a certain time. <clears throat> in the meantime, you see these other things going on where the kingdom of God was upon earth, as Brother Branham said, God's headquarters upon earth was the Garden of Eden. And what came in there? Sin came in there the same as it came up above. As the Bible said, thou wast in Eden. <clears throat> we'll get into that as we once have previously. Now, there was a pattern set in heaven and it came to earth in God's earthly headquarters, the Garden of Eden. But as the pa that pattern in heaven was broken by Lucifer, so it was broken by Lucifer in Eden. See? Now let us just get the original again, <clears throat> as we have two times already and showed you on the board. So, all right, number one, we're going to go to Isaiah chapter 6. <clears throat> uh, beg your pardon, 14. Isaiah 6 later on. All right. <clears throat> Beginning at verse 12, it says, How art thou fault, Memon of Lucifer, son of the morning? This fellow that's a, a very outstanding creation, actually a cherub, and uh, he is an angel of light, as we can see from Ezekiel. So, thou, how art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I'll exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the earth. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I'll be like the most high, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Now, of course, we find that in the book of Revelation, <clears throat> that they may look narrowly upon thee, and so on. Now, let's go from this verse. It says, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. So you go to Job chapter 38 and 7. And it says, <clears throat> well, begin at one. Then the Lord answered Job out of the wind world and said, Who is this that darkened the counsel by words with not, without knowledge? Oh, that's a good one. He said, you're, you're just talking up a storm. You don't know what you're talking about. 
You don't have any knowledge of me. He said, I'm going to just let you know something now. Gird up now the loins, thy loins like a man, for I'll demand of thee and answer thou me. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the measure thereof, if thou knowest? Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof fastened? In other words, the earth hangs upon nothing. Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. <clears throat> now, we're looking at those stars, are we not? So, we go to Hebrews, the 11th chapter, and... Uh, <clears throat> verse 12 concerning Abraham therefore sprang there even a one and him as good as dead as many as the stars of the sky in multitude and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable and with that we go to 1 Corinthians 15 which is on the chapter of the resurrection and remember you can't resurrect anything that wasn't there to begin with and if there's something there now that wasn't there before, then it's a replacement. So, all right, let's go ahead and take a look at that. <clears throat> In verse 41, There is one glory of the sun, another the moon, and another glory of the stars. And one star differs from another in glory. And it's telling you of the position of the stars, the, the saints, the, the, the pre-existent ones that were in him, a part of his genes, a part of his thoughts, a part of the word, a part of God. And they were in that purpose and plan of Almighty God, and they had to be there before there was even one Adam or any creation whatsoever because it was all of God. And so there you see it. <clears throat> so there, that, that's where the great start of it is. Now, and the devil said, I'm going to exalt myself above that. Now, let's go ahead and take one more verse here about stars. And this is a very interesting one because it's found over here in Jude, verse 13. And this is about these people that are the serpent seed, the Cains and the Balaams and the Kors and the Dathans and the, <clears throat> and the rest of them. And it says here, they are raging waves of the sea foaming out their own shame, wandering stars. <clears throat> They're up there too. They are the created ones balancing out the uncreated ones, balancing out the born ones. So what I want you to see, there's two systems in the human flesh. There are two systems in the universe. There are two systems under Almighty God. There's two things going on now. They're twins. And one is of God, which is birth, and the other is of Satan, which is creation. And the intermingling of the, of the satanic program with flesh, which God had created in the animal, which could actually propagate itself in the human form in Eve and bypass Adam entirely. And you can do the same thing right now in a test tube. <clears throat> you got a little micro dish. You can, right now you can take an animal, put it with a human being, clone it, and pretty soon they'll be able to take two different substances. <clears throat> They're doing it now with plant life and insect life. No problem. No problem. Why? Because the principle's there. Didn't God say to Adam, take absolute control over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air? How are you going to do it? Just call them in? You could, but there's laws of, genetic, laws of genetics laid down there. <clears throat> and you can cross them successfully by science. That's where you get breeding of livestock and certain things. See? Now you come to the place where you could create anything at all. I don't mean create in the sense where you create in the sense man is doing something beyond himself. But he always has to take that which is here. That's why I can never understand who people want to start with materiality. And they say, well, all it was was material. There was protein there. Aha, we got some H2O. That's going to bring life. Hogwash. They, those idiots know the theory of spontaneous regeneration was thrown out of the cupboard years and years ago. There's no such thing. Remember years ago, they took some, some hay and they put it in a bottle. And, and they, they saw little things crawling around. And they said, ha ha, spontaneous generation. Somebody said, hogwash. Finally, some guy that wasn't a scientist, or at least he had an ounce of brains, which scientists don't seem to have. 
That's right, they don't have it. They got an illusion of grandeur and something from the devil, but their noggin's up here. <clears throat> because that's how they, you've got fools right in the noggin up here, right in the brain. And that's how the early church got deceived right there. And so that's how the whole thing goes. And so somebody said, well, we better just go ahead and boil that hay. So they boiled the hay and they sterilized the jar and they put a cover on it. Nothing. Or the spontaneous generation down the tubes. Just this is stick with nature. Well, how many, how many years ago did you people eat turkey 50 years ago? Well, I guess some of you did, sister. And well, even 70 years ago. But let's get it down to 75 years ago, make it a little narrower. <laughs> so remember the turkeys didn't have very big breasts. Then they got the big breasted bronze. And they start getting in the white, but the bronze is better than the white, better flavor. They breed them that way. They could breed a chicken right now so big he can't stand up on his legs. And that's, that's, that's take, not taking the DNA or the RNA or anything else. <clears throat> they next recently bred dogs back to the age of the Incas, a purple dog without, without hair on him. So I told you, God could have done that to Israel. They didn't stand still for it. As their brother Brown has said in marriage and divorce, he said, God will create again, but he said, not through sex. Forget it. Oh, that's wonderful what God's going to do. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> let's go over here to Exodus, the 28th chapter. <clears throat> I mean, Ezekiel, I beg your pardon. <clears throat> and in there it says in the 12th verse, Son of man, take up a lamentation against the king of, of the, upon the king of Tyre, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, thou sealest up to some full of wisdom, perfect in beauty. Now this, now this fellow right here we know is not the king. It's a, it's a, it's a picture <clears throat> of the devil and the antichrist that's to come on the scene. So, all right. Now has been in Eden, the garden of God. See, the king of Tyre wasn't. Every precious stone was like covering because he was like a high priest. But he wasn't a high priest, but he certainly led in the worship of God. And then it, he said uh, he was prepared... He was created. <clears throat> he was the anointed cherub that covers. <clears throat> and he's called the covering cherub. Now, if you go through, your, through the scripture, <clears throat> you're going to find that, that the cherub may not be, but I think is the highest form of spirit creation that there is. Now, the seraph, seraphim is also noted. And the seraphim is likened unto a fiery serpent. And it could be the seraphim and the cherubim are related. It could be even the same thing, but I kind of doubt it. But I do believe the cherubim is the highest form because the high form, Satan being a cherubim, allowed him to lead in the worship of Almighty God <clears throat> because that's what he was doing. Now, also, he says, Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day uh, thou wast created till iniquity is found in thee, till you begin changing the word. Till you begin, begin changing what? You begin, began changing the system laid down for your position. <clears throat> What's the first thing you go to get a job? They hand you a sheet and you have a job analysis right there. Then they tell you, they give you a job description. And you've got to do what that paper says because that's the way it is. That's all based upon the heavenly pattern that comes right down here. <clears throat> there's a job description. <clears throat> there's everything that's ordained of God in the ground, on the grounds of whether it's creative or whether it's by sonship, and those are offices which are stewardships, absolute stewardships of accountability, and at the end time, every single person is judged according to his stewardship. You can't be judged whether you're son of God or not because you are or you aren't. There's no way. But you can be judged, were you faithful to the place that God put you? Now where's your women preachers? Yeah. Rebellious is the devil himself. See to the serpent. But they'll worship God. Sure they will. I'll show you a scripture for it, don't worry. How much time we got? About a whole half tape? 40. <clears throat> we had a turnover here and you didn't tell me. <clears throat> All right. Well, we keep going. Here were the cherub that covered the cherub, the, cher the covering cherub. <clears throat> so therefore, <clears throat> we see that he was, in my understanding from Scripture here, he sealed up the sum. If he sealed up the sum, 
a cap was put on it as a created being, an entity, at the time Satan was set forth to be that leader in the worship. So in my understanding, <clears throat> he's absolutely the top one <clears throat> in the, in the, of, of a created being, a created spirit. <clears throat> now, thus God, as worshiped in the beginning, gives us a glimpse of what it should be and will be upon earth <clears throat> in spite of Matthew 15 and 9 and Mark 7 and 7, which started in heaven, and we saw in Ezekiel 28, 15, which was, thou was perfect, everything was exactly right, you're the right one for the position, you fulfilled it, and you're doing a great job until one day you begin to break the <clears throat> job description that was given to you. See? What did Cain do? Same thing. Offered the first fruit instead of the blood. Wrongly divided. Throughout the job description. I preached a long time ago. I was so upset by what's going on among some of the preachers that call themselves believers in this message. <clears throat> I took sermon after sermon on, on what was required in the Word of God of stewardship of pastors. You think anybody gave, gave two hoots and two, give two bits for it? Now let's go to Matthew 15. Well, Matthew 15 to Mark 7, 7 is the same thing. <clears throat> uh, so Matthew 15 uh, is good enough. 15 and 9. It's a clear condemnation <clears throat> that explains everything that happened in heaven. And it says then in 15 and 9, But in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. <clears throat> so what happened? It wasn't that they threw out the word of God. It was that they parodied or paraphrased or gave their own understanding and interpretation so that it got so bad under the Pharisees, and the, especially the Pharisees, that they counted the number of nails or the, uh, what you had, and they say, in the soles of your shoes, lest you were carrying too much weight on your feet and working on the Sabbath. And they hated Jesus for healing a man on the Sabbath. Yet Jesus said, you're allowed to pull an ox out of the ditch and do a good turn to somebody that needs it. You can even go to the field and eat wheat, but you can't steal it if you're hungry. Oh, they said, no, 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 no. We got the pots and pans, everything our own idea. <clears throat> in vain do you worship me. Your worship and your service is vain because you didn't stay, as I have often said, keep the word within the framework of the word. So it's word, 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 word. <clears throat> Not long ago, Brother Pete Clausen was dealing with a fella. Oh, he said, and he, that man got very sarcastic. He said, oh, yes, oh, it was the word, the word, the word. Oh, listen, it was the word that made it all. It's the word that sustains us all. It's the word that gives us life. It's the word that condemns us. It's the word that justifies. It's the word, 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 because the word is God. Amen. And that man says, he's got the Holy Ghost. I'm going to tell you something. You can be anointed by the Holy Ghost and not have the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> You may wonder why it is that a person must be born again and it takes the Spirit of God to come upon him to do it. You say, well, if the man is seed in the first place or the woman is a seed, she's got the soul from God. She's got that part of God. That is Holy Spirit. Why do you need it? All right, then. All right, Eve came from Adam. She had the very same life Adam had. That same thing was in her egg. But I'll tell you what, she had to have a further infusion from Adam, that life, to bring forth that child. And so with you and me. It takes an infusion from God. I'm going to tell you something. You can clear anything in this scripture Understand everything if you follow this message and open your heart. You get your answers. I've pondered that for years, but I got my answer this week. <clears throat> now, that's what Jesus said, and it started back here in, in, in uh, Ezekiel 28, 15. In vain do you worship me. He said, now, worship then, <clears throat> worship then, should be pure and according to the word, and worship in vain is when people take what the Bible says, what God said, and they bend it or they pervert it so it becomes a perversion. And that's a spiritual adultery. <clears throat> exactly what it amounts to. <clears throat> so, all right. <clears throat> now, I mentioned a while ago here that <clears throat> we'd already talked about this and put it on the board concerning what we saw uh, from the very beginning here. <clears throat> if I can go over this quite rapidly, 
We'll maybe get somewhere here. All right, we're going to start at the very top here where it is spirit. That's God, spirit. Now, it's undefined uh, to begin with. You don't even have to call it holy. <clears throat> because what is holy unless there's something that's unholy? See, so it's got to go holy in the first place because there's nothing there but that one. And that can be W-H-O-L, whole, and H-O-L-Y, holy. <clears throat> because you can't accuse God of anything under any consideration. Who art thou, man, reply against God? Who are you, Satan, to come and say something or anything else? But under there now we have then, we have over here, which is love, because God is love, and we have omniscience, and we have omnipotence. I'm just abbreviating those, see? <clears throat> we, have, um, we have it there. Now that, that's under the Holy Spirit. He's love, there's God's in three. He is love, and he's omniscient, omnipotent, and if he weren't love, you would have a very dangerous person there. Because uh, total power and total knowledge <clears throat> without total dedication to truth and a positive nature which is welcoming and keeping, you got problems. See? All right. So it's welcoming because God wants you to worship and it's keeping because he keeps you. Everything about this is beautiful. So, all right, under here then, we have the same one. It's a Rima uh, Logos God. He's a Rima Logos. That's a Rima Logos spirit. <clears throat> now, he's also faithful. That's in Deuteronomy. He's the faithful God. And what's he faithful to? His covenants. So, therefore, you cannot talk about God being faithful outside of the word. Then the minute that you pervert the word, he's no longer faithful. You're stupid. Yeah, you fool yourself. Women preachers. Pentecost. Pentecost. Neo Pentecost. See the whole thing? Now let's keep moving. <clears throat> All right, with that then, we have predestinating God. I abbreviate that. Predestinating. <clears throat> and that's according to what we read. I haven't read, but it's in Romans, the 8th chapter. And it's all based upon love. It's in Ephesians. In love having predestinated us. Whom he, whom he knew, he also called. Whom he called, then he justified. Whom he justified, then he glorified. It's all under predestination. See? So you got it right here. <clears throat> now, here is what we're looking at in the very beginning, before there's a speck of stardust, before there's anything. Because God cannot change, and he cannot be changed. And Brother Branham said, he never has had one thought, thought since. Whatever he did the one time can never be changed to God in continuity. <clears throat> now over here, and we're looking at worship, we're going to see over here then, from this coming from here, which is, we see God, Father. Now actually, <clears throat> before he is God, he's got to have someone to worship him. Now, Brother Branham said a light formed before there was a speck of stardust, before there was a breath of wind, and then he said before there was an atom, which is what he should have said in the first place, or a molecule, or, oh, there's so many things you could see. You should go down, 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 which is almost, can a microscope finally find it? <clears throat> I don't know. So you get right down here, <clears throat> he has to be a father, and at the same time he is a father, then he automatically becomes God. That's, but the, remember this. The scripture said, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the reason it always puts in there, God before Father, is on the grounds that this is a son, and he's subservient to the Father, and the fatherhood is Godhood. Amen. So therefore, it's blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, because he was all of this before he had a son. <clears throat> and the son was the first one that takes out the full position of the thought of God, the word of God, the only begotten one, and in him the fullness of the Godhead is bodily. And I, I see it this way, not only was God in him fully, exposing himself to the world in a bodily form, but every single thing that God does in and through the body had to come through Jesus the Son up here. So here he is up here, and out of this comes the Son. And he is the Son of God. <clears throat> okay. Now, from down here, in this area here, 
come suns and stars. And this is Job uh, 38, as we saw over here. <clears throat> now, all this here is life of God, which is spirit. Okay, over here on this side here, we have creation. And up here we have, some say the seraphim are higher than cherubim, but I kind of doubt it. And we'll tell you a little later on. Cherubim, and then we have archangels, and then we have angels. And there might be some kind of spirits, I don't know. We just put a question mark there. <laughs> angels are spirits, so I don't know. <clears throat> now, in here, then we have the worship of God. This comes this way, this goes this way. Here we have the worship of God. <clears throat> so this here, then is your heavenly kingdom. And up here we have in the worship of God, we have Ezekiel chapter 1, which we'll read some of. And we have Isaiah 6, of which we'll read some. And then we have Ezekiel 10, uh, 8 to 15. And then over here, we have uh, also Revelation 4, 1 to 11. <clears throat> That's about right there. So let's just take a look at this here now. So if we're going to look at worship, we got to go to Ezekiel, the first chapter. And we want to notice right away, he says, Now it came to pass down the river Chebar, he said, I, the heavens were opened, I saw visions of God. He, now, he had visions from God, but that's not the truth. Although it's the truth, it came from God, God allowed it, it was visions of God. He was looking at something of God appearing in a vision. Now, not like Moses. Numbers 12, it says, if a man's a prophet, I'll speak to him in dreams and visions, but Moses, my servant, is not, so I'm going to see, we'll see, so we can see him apparently. <clears throat> now, in here, he said in that verse, for I looked and behold, a world and came out of the north and a great cloud and a fire unf un un enfolding itself and brightness was about it and out of the midst of the color of amber, the midst of fire and out of the midst there were the likeness of four living creatures and this was their appearance at the likeness of man. Uh, they had four faces, everyone had four wings, their feet were straight feet, the soles of, like soles of a calf and so on and so on and they, how they kept their wings and how they turned and how they looked and everything there and you're going to find that that is speaking of the cherubims. <clears throat> and then over here in the 10th chapter, I think is what I mentioned here, uh, 10 of Ezekiel. I'm just, I've got to go over this rapidly because I don't need to take all of it. And it says here, 10, 8 to 15, and the appearance, and there appeared in the cherubims the form of a man's hand under their wings. And when I looked, behold, the four wheels by the cherubims, one wheel by one cherub, another wheel by another cherub, and the appearance of the wheels was as the color of a, a barrel of, of a burl stone. And, there's their, and then it tells what their appearance was like <coughs> again <coughs> at that particular time. Now we go over here to, to Isaiah. The sixth chapter. <clears throat> In the year that King Uzziah, uh, Uzziah died, uh, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And it stood, and it stood, and above it stood the seraphim. Each had six wings, and twain he covered his face, twain he covered his feet, and twain he did fly. There, see, that's a different uh, from the cherubim. And one cried another, holy, holy, as the Lord God of hosts, and so on, and the doorpost moved, and <clears throat> various things like that. Now, that's why it says here, then, uh, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, handed up, and he's trained for the temple, and above it stood the seraphim. So they had a very, very high place in the economy of God. But I still don't say, say that in my estimation here, because it says in Ezekiel, sealing up the sum of wisdom, and, with the, and the definitive power that Satan had, it could well be that he was the most perfect and the highly idealized one in God's creation. Uh, we don't hear seraphim going down the drain uh, like the cherub did, and cherubim's no doubt, 
and perhaps even we don't know about archangels, we just know that some stayed steady. We do know that a lot of angels fell. <clears throat> but what I'm looking at here is just for the simple understanding of, of, the, of the economy of heaven. Now, in this uh, government worship of God, you have also Revelation chapter 4, 1 to 11, and you see there was a, uh, there was a, a rainbow around the throne, in sight like an emerald. Around the throne were four and twenty seats, the elders, and so on. And before the throne, a sea of glass, crystal, and so on. And there were four living creatures, the eyes before, full of eyes before and behind. And then it tells you what they're like. <clears throat> so you've got the same picture all the way through the Bible. You've got an actual study of worship in this whole area here that comes forth from Almighty God. <clears throat> now, Brother Branham indicated that the Son of God in worship here actually took upon himself the form of Michael, and he's an archangel. <clears throat> and this one over here, we have, we have Satan, and he is a cherubim, and he is leading over here in the worship of God also. <clears throat> now, I'm going to give you my understanding of exactly why I believe that Brother Branham used what has been used by other people in saying definitively that Jesus actually was Michael at the very beginning. And I take it right out of the book of Ezekiel, which I read to you. And in there, it tells you that he said, I saw visions of God. So that God was actually manifested in and through the cherubim. And so the same thing holds here, that this was a spirit being, the Son of God, the same as God was. And was he invisible, the same as God? I do not know the answers. I haven't got anything to tell you. All I know is that Brother Branham said a light form. And whatever came of that light, I don't know. And the prophet didn't tell us to my knowledge unless it's on some tape. So then how was it then that Jesus could be Michael? Because he simply would manifest through him just the same as God manifested through the cherubim. <clears throat> now let's also know this, that Jesus was created, according to the scripture, thou hast made him a little lower than the angels. Even though he was the son of Almighty God, he was put in a position of an archangel, not a seraphim or a cherubim. He was put lower than that because he would come down here as a man and, and eventually then take upon himself the form of a man and take upon him a part of the flesh, but not all flesh because he was not born of sex. It was a created egg and a created sperm. <clears throat> and God was made of the Lord of the angels and he made him for the suffering of death. And so I look at the, what I'm looking at here is this, that Satan had a superior position or could have had. See, I'm not a prophet, so I can't tell you. But I'm looking at the possibility of Satan being what he was as Lucifer up there in the leading of worship. He was the, the ultimate. He was the epitome. He was it when it came to creation in my understanding. Now, God was not manifesting through him, but he was manifesting through others that had the position of cherub, but did not have the ele elevated position of the great cherub that Satan was in that leading of worship. <clears throat> now, we want to go a little bit further on that to, to uh, get our points. Uh, well, I could have read actually to you chapters 1 and 2 of the book of Hebrews, which would give you a better understanding of what I had in uh, how, how that I'm placing Jesus at that time in an archangel, <clears throat> and we're placing <clears throat> Satan here. He was a cherub, and he had a great position, and you'll notice that nothing in here wanted to elevate itself above God. Michael an archangel, Gabriel an archangel, none of these wanted to elevate themselves. They were very happy to be what they were. And God being glorified in worship, now the Son of God through Michael, and now Satan in the form of a cherub, <clears throat> because they are the ones that were covering, uh, even as you made the... Uh, uh, temple or the Ark of the Covenant, according to what was seen in the Mount, they had the Ark of the Covenant, remember, in there with a mercy seat overlaid with gold. The cherubims in the original were made of solid gold. In the temple, they were made of olive wood overlaid with gold. 
So you see, you can see then that if, if, if Michael's standing here in Archangel, you got a cherub over here, and they're both in solid gold, they have a tremendously high position in the economy of Almighty God and worship. You simply can't get away from it. <clears throat> so Satan had that very, very high position. And he actually today, whether people want to recognize it or not, he still has a very high position, which we don't particularly uh, want to have anything to do with. Now, at this point, it's good to recall that we are dealing with the worship and service of God from both sides, sons and created beings or entities. And they are now today in one lump after Genesis 6. There's no more human beings true human beings, because no, no it was the last genetically pure one. And Romans tells us it's all of one lump. And they come down now, the beast comes down, uh, the, the, the children of, this, of the enemy through animal life comes right down through the human bodies as we have them today because they're able to do it. And science can do it right now even at a greater measure. <clears throat> Remember, just before the flood and after the flood, anything that entered their minds, they were able to do. They could do it. That's why the atomic bomb brought on the flood and those other things that Brother Branham tells us. Now, when Satan and his hosts were cast down from heaven and no more led in worship, Satan took over a created animal in Eden and started his kingdom on earth in order to try to take the sons of God into his kingdom and enjoy their worship. And Matthew 4 proves this positively. But Hebrews 2 and 14 shows <clears throat> that it could not be done. So Hebrews 2 and 14... Because this tells you what Jesus himself was really like and tells all about him. Hebrews 2 and 14. And it says here, For as much sin as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. Now that tells you he took a part of it, but didn't take all of it. <clears throat> he only took a part of it. What flesh and blood he took was the human form, and it was a flesh and blood body. In the resurrection, it was a flesh and bone body. It was not a flesh, blood, and bone body. Hand let me and see a spirit of not flesh and, and bone. Didn't say blood. So here he was. He, here he was right down here at the end time. And Satan could not take him over. See? <clears throat> now, this is based, this in, in Hebrews here, is based over here on the book of Luke, the first chapter describing how Jesus Christ came into this earth. Uh, and it tells you in 30 to 35, it says, an angel said unto, her, unto Mary, Fear not, for thou hast found favor with God, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, bring forth a son, you'll call his name Jesus, and so on. And Mary said, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the high shall overshadow thee. <clears throat> now remember that man actually was tripartite in the sense of body, soul, and spirit. And a part of him was original from God, eternal, a part of him was created, the spirit part, and the body part was actually formed. Now you'll see that Jesus literally goes through the same thing. But he does not come through the human instrumentality of how Adam and Eve set the thing in, in movement, although it was not only allowed to God, it was something that God <clears throat> knew was going to happen there. Now don't forget Lucifer didn't cease to be Lucifer. Now over here in 2 Corinthians, now we're taking right down from the worship above to the worship down below here. So don't get lost in your thinking with me. I'm, I know I'm going too fast and for my own good and for your good too. <clears throat> now, he says over here, verse 3, 2 Corinthians 10, But I fear lest by any means that as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety. <clears throat> now, the serpent beguiling Eve is a beast that was very intelligent and could mix with the human race. He could talk and he could think and therefore be persuasive. Now remember that this one who was able to talk had to be controlled by the devil because this animal perverts what God has said and that's exactly what Satan did. So now you've got the perfect identification of another created entity working with the spirit being of great tremendous perfection and power and position <clears throat> that is almost indescribable is how great that Satan was. Now, and over here he says in verse 13, 
for they are false, such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. These are positions that they don't own, they take upon themselves, and it's allowed of God and anointed of God. Why? Because it's created by God who is spirit. But it's not God's Spirit coming upon His creation as God's Spirit comes upon His own sons. It's simply position and gifts that endow the position and make it work. And that's why they've got these gifts. Now, no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it's no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. Now, notice what it tells you there. <clears throat> it tells you these people here have an understanding to a degree of Scripture. They can handle it, but they pervert it. And they act as though they have the truth and know the truth, and they can actually back it up at the end time with gifts. The same as it tells you in Deuteronomy chapter 13 where we begin to get the history of what this is all about today. And I just threw that in there, <clears throat> but you remember anyway. <clears throat> now, and don't forget he is still a great creation to be, re to be reckoned with, because when he was, he, as a cherub, he was above the archangels, for it tells you over here in Jude, <clears throat> <clears throat> verses 8 and 9. Likewise, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, speak of the dignities. That's these creations, these entities that have taken on themselves religious positions and offices, and they are literally anointed because why? They need to have something from God and because everything is of God. And it is not a genuine Holy Spirit anointing that was upon Jesus. That same anointing, that was not the same anointing upon Satan. It was from the same one that anointed and he only had an anointing to position. It was not to sonship. He never had it. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. <clears throat> so you can see right here <clears throat> that Satan is a very formidable foe, and he's something that you would have to have a lot of power to deal with. And now notice how Jesus in Matthew 4 dealt with Satan. <clears throat> he kept his position by repeating the word and staying with the word and then defying him and said, depart from me. Just the same as at the end time, God is going to say, depart me, works of iniquity. He get thee behind me, Satan. He said, that thou shalt, you shall worship the only Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. And Jesus stayed right within the framework of his office, which was not to turn bread, stones into bread or to jump off of buildings or to make some kind of a superficial circus act, <clears throat> some manifestation like a Houdini, as Brother Branham called it. All right. Satan and his, en and his entities parallels Jesus and his sons or his children. <clears throat> And they are, for they are the sons of God. Each is what he is by predestination as to essentiality. Sons, creations, even as we today are one lump in one mixture, according as it was said of Isaac and his two sons that came out of Rebekah. But all have offices. You'll find that over in Romans. <clears throat> Let's see, Romans 11, I think what I want here. <clears throat> Romans 11 and, and we could go down 25 but I would not brethren you, you should be ignorant of the mystery lest you be wise in your own conceits of blindness as verse 25 is happening part of Israel until the fullness of Gentiles come in and so, and, and so all Israel shall be saved as written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away in Godness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them, when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sake, but as concerned touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. 
<clears throat> now it tells you right there the gifts and callings are the pins. You can't change what you are, but you can live in what the conditions that God wants you to live in and do those things that God wants us all to live in. Now, if we go to 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 14, you'll find there's many members, there's many offices. Just keep on going. <clears throat> many members and many offices. And in Romans 12, you're going to find there's not only nine gifts of the Spirit, as in the book of, of uh, 1 Corinthians 12, as we noticed, but there are also many other gifts. As Arania said, there's hundreds of gifts in the bride of Jesus Christ. And going to 1 Corinthians, then the third chapter, <clears throat> uh, we come to, you could read all the way from 9 to 23, that we are laborers together in God, we are God's husband, we are God's building, according to the grace of God which is given to me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundations, he got the pattern from the heavenlies, exactly what it's supposed to be, and buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he builds thereon. Why? Because you've got a blueprint, the word within the word. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. <clears throat> you got it. So you're starting with him as the great prophet, the Messiah, starting right down the line, working with him. The, the cornerstone that the builders put it not has now become the headstone, which is going to come down and crush the nations that disobeyed him. Come right down, see, taking, taking vengeance on the enemies. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, a stubble, every man's work should be made manifest. For the day shall declare it. Make it manifest, you see. Prove it right out there. Speak it out. Because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide, which you built thereon, he shall receive reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself saved, and yet so by fire. Know ye not that your temples of God, and the Spirit of God dwells in you? <clears throat> tells you right there, you're sons of God, the, the Spirit of God has bound you back to God. You're completely born again. Now in the bride of the Lord Jesus Christ, or the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, you're a member in particular, you've got a particular office, you've got specifications, everything is there for your usage. And so you stay within the framework of the Word. And remember, those that are the led of the Spirit, they are the children of God. And the Spirit can never lead you against the Word because He is the Word. Why is He the Word? Because it's the author and the fulfiller of the Word, the manifestor of it, so how can He not be? <clears throat> See, that's why that's the Spirit of God is in the Word, given to us. And also 2 Corinthians 5, 5 and 10. It gives us some more un understanding here. Uh, yeah, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive things done in his body, according to that which you've done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. Then you go to, you go to the book of Revelation, and you go way to the 20th chapter over here. And it says in Revelation 10 to 21. Uh, and we don't have to read it all. But there, there you find the, um, uh, the devil that deceived him, cast on a lake of fire. And then I saw a great white throne. Heaven and earth fled away, no place for him. An angel, and I saw the dead, great and small, stand before God. The books were open. Another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of the things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead and the hell and everything else. They said they were judged according to every man of their works. And death and hell were cast on the lake of fire. This is the second death. <clears throat> you see right there what God is doing. <clears throat> There's no way that you can rescind exactly what you are. Now, the point is, there is a reward for those that take seriously their vocation, which is the calling that God gave them. Now, in this hour... <clears throat> We know that Brother Branham told us there's one thing left for you and me to do, which we, which we of necessity do, is to live just good Christian lives and be led of the Lord according to his word, which word we have had revealed to us in this day. Now, in, in, and you can see this more clearly in Revelation chapter 22. <clears throat> and you go to, you can start in verse 10. And he said to me, seal not the sayings of the book of the prophecy of the, I beg your pardon. And he said to me, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book for the time is at hand. So between Revelation 10 and 7, or 4 up there rather, and Revelation 22 and 10, the book was open. In one place it says seal it, the next place it said don't you dare seal it. <clears throat> so now if the seals are open, everything is, everything is open before us, and everything is open before us, and we're open before God. That's, that's Hebrews the 4 and 12. And then it says here, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still, filthy, filthy still, righteous, righteous still, holy, holy still. <clears throat> At that particular time. And after that, he said, Behold, I come quickly. That's the second coming. There's no doubt about it. You see, I'm Alpha and Omega. And blessed are they that do his commandments. No, that wash their robes. Do his commandments. That's a, that's a gross mistranslation. That they have, may have the right to the tree of life. 
and may enter through the gates into the holy city. It doesn't say Eden now. It says you've got full uh, gratuitous entrance into, into, into the uh, new Jerusalem itself. <clears throat> now it says at this time, without her dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers. And so you got in there the sorcerer with your, with your apothecaries, and they're your drug dealers. So you got a world that's set on fire by drugs. In they're illicit and everything else. If they're not drugs, you can't have it. A man got arrested in Norway not long ago for having an ordinary vitamin in his pocket. He had, didn't have a prescription for it. <clears throat> so you got the sorcerers. They're the guys that have, are using the, uh, the, the uh, cell from the udder and taking out the nucleus and putting the, into, uh, and, and uh, put, putting the, uh, joining it with the, uh, with the uh, ovum. <clears throat> They're your scientists, pseudoscientists. Your druggists, right in there. And they're controlling the whole world. It's a drug system. They'll tell you Prozac is so great, but pretty soon they'll find Prozac isn't so great. You better you hit yourself with a crowbar or something and put you to sleep for a day or two. Because you'll have more than a dozen crowbars on you as time goes on. But you see right in here, and then you got your whoremongers. Now who are the whoremongers? They're the ones that are fornicating with the devil and his emissaries, the angel of light, so-called. And then you got the, you got the murderers. <clears throat> Those that are killing the souls of men, that's your clergy again. And idolaters, in idolatry. And idolatry right now, we know to be, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's typed by fornication. And no fornicator goes to in, anywhere but the lake of fire. And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. <clears throat> See, and they're lying right now. Right down the line. Then it says here, if any man shall take, a, take away the words of this book or the prophecy, God will take away his part <clears throat> from it if he adds to it. He will get out of the plagues. So we're at the very end time here. So now we're getting into a conclusion, but it's going to take a little time yet. And that's to see how the twins, uh, uh, these twins, which are a true church bride and a false church, are paralleled in this day. So to do so, we follow in Scripture how Brother Branham said there'd be a razor blade difference. All right. In the beginning in the worship of heaven, Satan was anointed to worship, but not as Jesus the Son. There was two different anointings there, but what came to each one came from God by reason of the fact there is nothing made that wasn't made by God. Amen. And there isn't anything that's not maintained by God. And there's not anything that's not allowed by God. Nobody just rested it from God and said, I'm going to do this. It was there. And they had what Brother Branham called the free moral agency. He put Adam to it. He puts us to it. <clears throat> See? Now, these ones here, by nature, because they weren't sons, positively could have something from God, which is spiritual. But it is not the Spirit Himself. It is a derivative. It is something from it, because that's what you're looking at. As Brother Branham very candidly said, the end-time ones are anointed either to the Word or they are anointed to gifts. Now, the true Son of God is anointed to the Word, also having gifts which He will use within the framework of the Word and according to the job description which is written here in the Bible. The others don't give a rip. That's why I've been so plagued by preachers that want people jumping up and down in the church, speaking in tongues and interpreting so-called and prophesying and wanting it and saying, you can't have a good service without that. If that's what we got to have here, I got news you. I'm leaving. I won't even be back tomorrow morning. You take care of yourselves. You can have it. I'm not interested. If, why should I settle for the unreal when the heavens are full of the real? <clears throat> now, if I can't get my hands on the real, then I better stay away just the same from the unreal. But I have got my hands on the real. Because the real is the spirit-filled word of this hour, which, in which there's no mistakes. It's the true plenary edition or fulfillment of revelation of the word of God, that which is perfect has come. And we have it at this point. So we cannot take or add to it. <clears throat> now, 